Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie the Paper Pixie coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. Tonight, I'm really excited about tonight's project. Of course, I was designing it at the very last minute, but I hope that you love it. It is a remake of an essentials box. Um, so I, I don't know, it was probably two years ago I created an essentials box that held a pocket back hand sanitizer, a Burt's Bees lip balm, and, a, and a, uh, the mini Altoids tin. It was those three things. And I want to give a shout out to Deb Crowley from Expressively Deb. She had done, um, inspired by my box, had created a box for the hand cream, the pocket back, and some treats. And I wanted to show you, this is what we're, this is what's inside this one. So I stuck a gift card to the lid. We've got pumpkin pecan waffle is the fragrance. Nolan and I went to Bath and Body Works today because I was looking for coordinating stuff. But inside this, I've pixified it. The design of this box is going to look a heck of a lot like our paper pumpkin boxes. So a pocket back, I'm going the wrong way, a pocket back, a hand cream, and I don't know if you guys have seen these before. I think I found this at Walmart, but these are the turtle bites. And I thought this was cute because it's milk chocolate with caramel and pecans. And these are pumpkin pecan waffle is the fragrance. So we're going to create this tonight. I was writing my measurements on the fly because as you know, I always tweak things. I try to maximize paper here. We're going to actually cut paper on the fly tonight. I hope that's okay with you and we'll create this box together. Now I am gonna be cutting this from a sheet of 12 by 12, but I'm gonna give you a couple of tips if you uh, absolutely need to use eight and a half by 11. And I'm sorry for those of you that use A4, since I know you only have eight and a quarter. You can probably tweak this a little bit, but I'm not sure you have access to the Bath & Body Works. So anyways, I've got all these measurements in my head tonight. So really quickly, Brian, are you ready for your cameo? Brian is here watching the comments as you roll on through. We are going to be doing a live Q&A at the end of the live stream. So if you do have a question tonight, be sure to put Q colon in front of that question. That will help me cue the questions at the end of the live stream and we'll go through all of those till I've answered all your questions. That'll help me focus on tonight's projects and then we'll get into the Q&A. It's always, you guys always ask the greatest questions. If you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. Please use my current host code on orders under $150. The easiest way to do that is to use my shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. And um, that will auto magically add the current host code for you. So you don't have to think about it. It is always at the top of my website, thepaperpixie.com. If your order is 150 or more, don't use the host code because you'll earn stamp rewards, but you will still earn Pixie Perks from me as well. All right. Um, oh, really quickly, I was going to show you a super quick sneak peek. Let me bring my little tray out here of fitting florets. I just got these products in today. Sorry for my little paper mess here, uh, but I wanted to show you them up close and personal. This is currently demonstrator pre-order time for the Fitting Florets collection of products. You can also add these to a starter kit. So I've got the starter kit link at the bottom of the screen. During the month of October, you get to choose $155 of product for and pay only $99 for it. It ships for free, which is an additional discount. Great time to grab a lot for a little. I would love to have you join my team of Paper Pixies and you can add fitting florets to a starter kit today. So let me show you up close and personal. This is the framed florets bundle. And I love this because these are the framed florets dies. Now I haven't even put these on my magnet cards yet, but look at those oval frames. So, so amazing. I absolutely love this frame with all the little hearts. You can nest these together and build frames and all kinds of wonderful things. And you've got some dies to cut out flowers. And that comes again bundled with the frames flor framed florid stamp set, which I'm dying over these fonts. They are so incredible. This is an exclusive stamp set during this promotion, which goes through January 4th. Look at this framed and festive stamp set. I absolutely love it. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. These mixture of fonts are stunning. Let me show you the designer series papers up close here. Get this out of the background. Well, first, let me show you the embellishments. These are the adhesive backed gold swirls 
Really, really nice, super thin, super light, but beautiful on projects. And then here is the designer series paper. I'm gonna show you both sides here. These are just little three by three pieces. It comes in 12 by 12. This is my favorite, because I just love those colors together. There we go. I love this floral pattern. Really beautiful combination of colors. So this is Fitting Florets, coming to an online store near you on November 1st for everyone. But if you can't wait and wanna get your hands on it early, you can add them to a starter kit. And if you are a current demonstrator, it is pre-order time for us, so we can grab this now. All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick show and tell. The kids have been on fall break, so I only have show and tell from Nolan. And he just put a, together a little hodgepodge of, this was his latest Lego set. We've got a police SUV, a helicopter, a garbage truck, which is one of his favorite things in the world. And then I think this is a little garbage tote. <laughs> he got to spend some birthday money. So this is what he chose. And these are all his little people. And this is a Chewbacca thing, but I'm not sure which person that belongs to. So that's what Nolan wanted to show you tonight. He is seven, our first grader. Lily will have something for you next week, she says. All right, let's go ahead and jump into tonight's projects. I love it. Thank you guys so much. All right, so here is the box. Now, I'm going to pause here really quickly. Um, one of the things that I sometimes have difficult with, and I know some of you will resonate with this as well, Sometimes you run out of mojo or you can't think of any ideas. So I decided to go back to one of my favorite fall cards this fall and decided to use that for the top of this box. I absolutely love this bundle. It is the Hello Harvest bundle. It was out of stock for a little bit. It is back in stock. And I've got some of the dies out because we're using the pumpkin dies. But you may notice I made a little fat pumpkin. I'm going to show you how I did that tonight. I know we um, came up with all kinds of ideas on the live stream that I demonstrated uh, the card, the, the matching card for this. So I wanted to show you what I did to do that wider pumpkin. But I just love this. This is a perfect gift for uh, teachers, um, first responders, anybody that you come across, because who wouldn't want to have a little survival kit or essentials kit? Again, this is what's inside. I did add a little gift card and that's just using a uh, temporary glue dot. I did get my hands on some of those. Uh, so this is the Bath and Body Works hand cream, pocket back, and then one of those turtle bites. You can get a bag of those, either in milk chocolate or dark chocolate. And then I wanted to point out that the closure of this is just like one of our paper pumpkin boxes. We do have mini paper pumpkin boxes, but if you are a paper pumpkin subscriber, this style of box will look familiar. So this is different than the essentials box that I did a few years ago. The sides are reinforced here. So that's part of why we need to use 12 by 12 here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some cardstock here. So I've got a piece of 12 by 12. You can create this out of eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my paper trimmer. And then we are going to do eight and five eighths. So I need my arm out for this, maximizing the space I've got here. So eight and five eighths by nine and a half, okay? We're saying it's a little bit blurry. Okay, maybe a network thing going on. So we're doing eight and five eighths by nine and a half, okay? Now, if you don't have 12 by 12, we do sell it in assorted colors, you can start with eight and a half by nine and a half. Now, give me until tomorrow to put together the project sheet for you to download. I'm gonna include in there just a quick bullet point about how you can tweak this if you don't have 12 by 12. So let me repeat, eight and five eighths by nine and a half. If you don't have 12 by 12, you can do eight and a half by nine and a half, okay? And I'll just point out what will be a little bit different. Bringing in the Simply Scored, and along the eight and five eighths inch side, so pay attention because this looks almost square. You wanna make sure you're looking at the measurement up here. So eight and five eighths. We are gonna score this at one and a half and two 
from each side. Sorry, I said one and a half. One and two from each side. And again, one and two. Now this would be the only thing that you would tweak. So if you are using eight and a half by 11 and you've got this at eight and a half inches wide, you are going to do seven eighths and one and seven eighths from each side. That just means that this edge that you're folding into the box will be just an eighth of an inch short. It won't go all the way to the bottom of the box, okay? So let me repeat that. If you're only using eight and a half, seven eighths and one and seven eighths from each side. Those are the only measurements that would need to change here. I'm gonna then rotate it to the long side, the nine and a half inch side. We're gonna score this at one. And doing the math here really quick. One and <laughs> four and a quarter, okay? I just, of course, didn't write it down. So one inches and four and a quarter inches. So you're gonna have something that looks like this. You got these three vertical one inch sections. If I turn it to the eight and five eighths inch side, you have these four one inch sections like so, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish if I can find my bone folder, hold on. So we're gonna fold and burnish on all the score lines. I do have a template to share with you tonight. I went to um, Bath and Body Works with Nolan tonight and they were completely out. I was trying to get a set of the travel size hand lotion and body wash or shower gel and they had no pairs whatsoever. It was like they had some only in lotion, some only in shower gel. So we were there much longer than we anticipated, hence me not being totally ready for tonight. Bringing in our template here. All right, so I've got this where I have the two uh, horizontal score lines along the bottom, like so. And I'm just gonna come in and cut up each of the vertical score lines. I'm gonna stop at the second horizontal score line. So, now this box will be really easy to change for Christmas or even a birthday um, by simply changing the fragrance of the things that you choose. I know that Bath & Body Works always has sales happening, a lot of buy three, get one free types things. So get on their email list and make sure you get all that information. All right, so we're going like this. Now this is gonna be our lid. This is the same from left to right, right to left. So you just have to pick one side here that's gonna be the top. So I'm gonna focus similar to the template here and we're gonna have this right section is gonna end up being our lid. So I'm gonna come in and completely remove this, these two squares right here. So we've got the two squares in the corner. And then I'm gonna come in and actually remove this section and this section. Probably could have done that before I did the vertical score lines, but in this instance, I do recommend that you cut away the score line. Now I get that question a lot on the live stream, and usually I cut right down the middle, but I will always call it out. Because this little flap is gonna tuck into our box, I just wanna make it have a little bit of a nicer edge. So let me do the cutting here, and then I'll show you up close what I did. I'm basically leaving the score line on the piece that I removed, so you've got a nicer edge here on the lid, okay? I'm also gonna remove one of the squares here from this tab, like so. Get these pieces out of the way here, even though I'm gonna make a lot of those pieces. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this tab. I just wanna leave one of those squares behind, like so. Okay, so we're gonna come in, we're gonna do some miter cuts here. I'm gonna fold this out of the way. Yeah, everybody removes sections differently. So whatever you're most comfortable with or uh, the easiest way for your brain to uh, pick which sections to remove, go for it. There's no wrong way to do it here. So I miter cut those two tabs, and then I'm gonna come in and miter cut this section here. This is gonna fold into the box and give it a little bit of structure. I'm only miter cutting that outside section. 
So basically miter cutting right up to that first horizontal score line. And then on this section, I'm actually gonna come in about, I say like 3 16th, 3 16th of an inch. You wanna go, I don't know, you could do up to a quarter or so, but you're gonna do a much deeper miter cut here because of the way that this tucks into the box. So I'm just gonna come in, so we're doing just more of an angle here when we miter cut, so it looks like that. And you'll notice that on the paper pumpkin boxes as well. So this side is actually done. I'm gonna rotate it 180 and we're gonna repeat the same thing. I'm gonna flip the template here. And then again, I'm gonna just cut up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at the first horizontal, or second horizontal. <laughs> Sometimes my mouth moves differently than my brain. Does that happen to anybody else? <laughs> Brian's just laughing because he knows it happens all the time, don't I? All right, so same thing. We are gonna, I'm gonna focus on this side here. Remove those two squares in the corner. And then I'm gonna remove this section again, just cutting away that score line. Okay. Now while we're here, I'm also gonna come in and do that deeper miter cut as well. This is the tab that's gonna tuck in, so while we're here, we might as well do that. You can always cut away more if you need to, if for some reason your box isn't closing right. Okay, like that. All right, so now we're gonna remove these two excess squares, basically leaving behind a tab. And then I'm gonna just fold this out of the way and miter cut these. Doing lots of miter cuts tonight. This section here, we wanna do those deeper miter cuts. Then about 3 16ths of an inch to a quarter of an inch of an angle. And then this last section here, basically any part of this box that's gonna fold into the box, you wanna give it a little shave. All right, so there we go. Doesn't look like I missed any parts there. Hopefully I don't knock my little trash can down tonight. We shall see. All right, so the last thing we need to do is come in with a little circle punch. I've got just a half inch circle punch here and opposite the tab, this guy right here, is where we want to go ahead and do a little finger notch so that the recipient can get this box open. I'm going in about a third of the way there and this is just half inch circle punch. Stampin' Up! doesn't sell this anymore but it's easy to find on Amazon. So now this isn't gonna be exactly like our template because it's uh, template is not to scale because again, I'm using eight and five eighths for the width here, but that's what that looks like. This will be on the blog post when that makes it to the blog, hopefully in the next week or two, I'm still playing catch up, but I will have the project sheet uh, updated in the description of this video by tomorrow, okay? All right. So now we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut a couple more pieces of paper here for um, the lid. It's always easiest to do this before we put it together. So I'm gonna grab, I've got some mossy meadow here. And this piece I am going to cut to uh, four and a half by three and one eighth. doing this from memory. So four and a half by three and one eighth. This beautiful pumpkin pattern here, we're gonna cut this to four and three eighths. Nope, let's do three, sorry. Cause I want this to be in portrait. So three inches by four and three eighths. And because this is directional, you want it to be cut in portrait. So again, three by four and three eighths, that's going to layer with that mossy meadow piece. Let's go ahead and layer these two together with liquid glue. Okay. 
I love liquid glue for layers because it means I can get it right where I want it. Bringing our box back. Now again, the one that is the finger notch, this is actually the base of the box. This is our lid. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this here. Now, you can totally change the orientation of this box. If you'd rather present it to the recipient where it is in landscape shape, then you would just wanna cut your pattern into landscape versus portrait. I liked the way the insides looked in portrait. but total personal preference there. And then that should layer just nicely on the lid there. All right, so we'll come in and finish decorating this. Let's go ahead and put our box together. I'm gonna focus on these four tabs. We're gonna do one at a time. But the first thing I wanna do is add a little bit of tear and tape. Of course I can never find. I put I must have put everything somewhere. <laughs> Cuz my tear and tape went missing too. Hold on. Oh, here it is. I cleaned up and I cleaned up my stuff including my uh, bone folder. So tear and tape I find that for boxes like this where you do the reinforced edge, it just makes it a little easier to finish assembly with tear and tape on these flaps, but you can use liquid glue as well. All right, so liquid glue, I'm gonna flip this over and we're gonna start on one tab at a time. So liquid glue on the tab, and then we're gonna line up this score line with this cut edge to start to form our first box corner here. And liquid glue will let this get right into place for us. Then I'm just gonna work my way around to the other three tabs. Again, score line, lining that up with this cut edge. So the key is you're not gluing any of the tabs to the lid. We need to leave that free. All four tabs are gluing into the base. Tuck this guy in. If you have any glue oozing, I just kind of wipe that off with my finger there. And then a last one. All right, so the last thing we have to do then is to fold these guys down and I'm just gonna grab my take your pick tool and pull off that backing. I like to kind of just put it on a flat surface. It gives me a little bit of leverage to get that backing off. Sometimes you need to burnish <laughs> to get it to release for you. There's one. And then the other. And if you got any extra hanging over, just fold it back on itself. But I'm gonna go ahead then and just fold that right into the box. That's going to cover those tabs that we glued inside the box. Now, if you are creating this from the eight and a half piece, this section is just gonna be an eighth of an inch short from when it folds in, okay? But that should be just fine for this box to be in working condition for sure. Then I like to come in and just burnish that into place. Like so. Okay, so we've got those reinforced edges. Now these sides, I'm gonna do this from the side so you can see why we did that deeper uh, miter cut here. We're gonna basically tuck all of them inside and you just wanna make sure, especially right here, that this one is gonna clear the front of the box and it sure does. Okay, so that's how that's gonna close. We've got our little finger notch here. 
but again, it closes just like a paper pumpkin box. Now, we could stop here, right? Decorate the top of the box. This is still a great gift box to give to somebody, but if you wanna take it up a notch and turn it into a little compartmentalized essentials box, that's what we're gonna do next here. So I'm gonna do these uh, measurements on the fly as well, but this is gonna take two pieces of um, uh, Cajun craze. That's the color. I think I forgot to tell you it was Cajun craze. And I'm just gonna grab a new one. This is measurements that I wrote down. But of course I tweaked them on the fly. So the first one we are going to do four and a half by four and seven eighths. That's this guy. And then the second one is going to be one and five eighths. We good? by six and a quarter. So you're gonna need to, oh, Miles, thank you for the super chat, um, to six and a quarter. I just saw that pop through, it's my first one, thank you. All right, to six and a quarter. Miles is in Streamer Accelerator with me. Thanks for tuning in, bud. All right, so one and five eighths by six and a quarter. I'm gonna repeat those measurements again. These are for our little compartments for the inside. So the first one is four and a half by four and seven eighths. And the second one is one and five eighths by six and a quarter. So we're gonna do some scoring on these. All right, so on the four and seven eighths by four and a half along the, uh oh, here we go. I gotta double check this one. Oh yeah. All right, so along the long side, that's the four and seven eighths inch side, we're gonna score this at one and a half, two and three eighths, and three and a quarter. So we just did those three. Now I do like to flip this over and just go over it one more time at the one and a half mark and the three and a quarter, because we are actually going to accordion fold this piece. So let me repeat those again. One and a half, two and three eighths, three and a quarter. Now on the long skinny one, along the long sides, the six and a quarter inch side, we're gonna score this at, I'm doing this on the fly because I tweaked these, two and three quarters, three and five eighths, and four and a half two and three quarters, three and five eighths, four and a half. Again, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna go ahead and score on two and three quarters and four and a half so that we've got that kind of opposite with the valley and the mountain score lines. All right, so following those score lines, we wanna take the valley score line and turn it into a mountain fold. So just kind of study your cardstock. I'm gonna turn that into a mountain fold and burnish. Then the next one we're gonna go opposite. So zigzagging. And then, so it's gonna look like this, okay? Then we're gonna do the same thing on the wider piece. Again, just taking those valley score lines, turning them into mountain folds like so. Now, you do not have to put any adhesive on these, although I prefer to just because I think it gives it a nicer look. So all you're gonna do is put a little bit of tear and tape. You could do liquid glue as well, but basically we're gonna put a strip of tear and tape right inside that mountain, I guess, for lack of a better term. And that's gonna just kind of hold that together. So we're just gonna go right up to the score line. on both of these. And let's hope that Julie wrote the measurements down correctly. <laughs> All right, so take your pick tool. Let me show you that again. I've got tear and tape right up to that score line, but we are underneath that mountain there or teepee looking shape, sandwich board shape. And then we can just fold those on each other on that center score line. So now they're gonna hold together like so. Okay, so this is how I layer these in the box. 
I'm going to take the narrower side. It's just narrower by a little bit and put it along the left. But the great thing about these compartments is you can kind of pick and choose which direction you put them in. So that's just gonna lay right there in the bottom. Again, I don't need to adhere it, but you absolutely could. And then we've got this piece that's just gonna lay right here on the right side. Now I could flip this if I wanted the hand cream to be on the right and et cetera. I could also flip this, whatever orientation you would like there. So let me show you how I had it gonna beg, borrow, and steal because we had to go through the whole store to find these guys. But this will fit here. Then the pocket back here. And then I just grabbed this treat, but there are a couple treats that could fit in here. Grab the Bath and Body Works. So I've just got one of the removable glue dots. And they're big and giant. And I'm, I'm laughing because this roll they're actually on the opposite side of the paper. So let me show you what I mean. See, they're on the piece that you roll off. So this is also loaded backwards. Unless maybe that's the new way Glue Dots is doing it. But I found those on Amazon. I think they are listed on my favorites page here. All right, and then I'm just gonna stick this right on the lid, okay? You could do two of those if you wanted to. But let me show you another thing that will fit in here. These are those Snickers almond brownies, which I found I think at Walmart, but that will fit in here as well. I want to show you what Hershey's Nuggets look like. They're kind of a tight fit. This is what uh, Deb Crowley put in hers. Um, but I, the way that I designed these compartments, it is a little bit of a tight fit. You could flip one of these upside down and those would fit, but they're a little small for that compartment. Another idea I had is maybe some of those chocolate gold coins not sure what their diameter is, but I thought these little turtle bites were pretty cute. Maybe some mini Ghirardellis. I'm, I'm, I, I'm slim pickings in my treats at the moment. <laughs> but I love this, this fun little like essentials survival kit. So why don't we go ahead and finish decorating this box and then we'll jump to your questions. Again, this is all Bath and Body Works and these little turtle bites. The brand from these is Demets. Okay, let me show you the bag. The empty bags, because these are good. Um, but that's the milk chocolate one, and this is the dark chocolate, okay? I also, I wanted to show you, I was hoping that this would work, but it does not, so don't get all upset. But this, I thought was gonna fit, but it is much too tall. That is lip scrub too tall, but that would have been so perfect had that fit, so. But I mean, this is just, what a wonderful gift to give for gratitude, um, so many different uses. So we can go ahead and close that box. It's nice and sturdy. I love the size of it. This will be fun to give. So why don't we go ahead and decorate? We're gonna do some die cutting and some stamping here. And I'm sort of following along with the design of a card I made a month or two ago. So I'm just gonna grab a scrap of Cajun Craze. Gonna bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine here. And these are the dies to create the pumpkin. So I'm actually gonna cut two of this one, but let's just do, we're gonna take a couple passes here. Ooh, it's gonna make noise. I always get nervous. <laughs> and what I love about this set of dies is it not only cuts, but it also embosses and it does that really cool pattern there on the cardstock. So we're gonna cut one more of that, of the bigger pumpkin piece. A little, little jumping action there. Probably should have stamped as well. And then we've got our stem here, which I'm gonna cut out of Mossy Meadow. This will also cut and emboss. I'm so glad you guys like it, that's awesome. All right, I'm gonna, br I'll bring the machine back in a second. We gotta do a little bit of stamping. Hopefully that's gonna make noise. There we go. All right, 
so we got some pieces and parts here one and a half inch and inch. oh emma thank you for the super chat chocolate gold coins are one and a half Ooh, okay i think one and a half is gonna fit thank you for that Now, those would be perfect because this is one and five eighths by about one and seven eighths. So a stack of gold coins would be really cute in there. Could tie in the gold on the lid as well. So yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Those will be on my next Amazon order probably. All right. Grabbing a scrap of basic white here. Okay, so it's not really a scrap. It's a big giant piece. <laughs> But some Cajun craze. We're going to stamp our sentiment. Wishing you the loveliest day. I love this giant banner from this bundle. Yes, I designed it that way, Michelle. No closure needed. I love the way the paper pumpkin boxes close. That was my inspiration. Going to grab some post-it tape. And the die that will perfectly cut this out. Get that lined up and post it tape in place. Yes, yes, yes. Love your ideas. Awesome, awesome. Hairstylist, mail delivery. Yep, exactly. I'm going to just trim off the excess here because I got a really good scrap here. <laughs> this guy through one more time so far I have not knocked my trash can down Yeah, this post-it tape is awesome. I just have pieces of it. I'm sticking it up here. I'll just grab it. It works multiple times, which I love. All right, so now we've got our pieces and parts. So I've got two of the big pumpkin, and this is how I liked. I know we came up with a bunch of different ideas last time, but let me show you. I just took one of these guys and just cut it right up the middle in half. So then we're going to layer this with some liquid glue here. I'm going to grab my silicone mat just in case I make a mess here. And I've got my two pieces that I cut in half. I'm just going to go ahead and put liquid glue right along the edge there. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> and then we're just going to take kind of one at a time here. I'm just going to sandwich that right behind or place that right behind the big pumpkin. And like that. Okay, then we're going to grab the centerpiece. Yep, he got him. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, and then that in the center. So then you get kind of this larger pumpkin out of those pieces. I love the way that that looks. Got our little stem here. I'll put liquid glue right there along the bottom. Place that there. Then I'm gonna grab dimensionals. We'll do like a trio. I do, I like lots of dimensionals, y'all. Three more, there we go. Popping that up on the front. <laughs> Fastest fingers wins, Brian. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna pop this guy a little bit down towards the bottom there. Then a trio of dimensionals on our sentiment.
You have super fans. Oh, Mary, thank you for the super chat. You all are awesome. And I'm just popping that up right on top of that pumpkin. Look at the dimension on that. I love the texture that that die gives that pumpkin. And then I'm just gonna grab some of our linen thread because I felt like it needed some more. Currently, the um, the gems and the leaves are back ordered, or I should say out of stock until November 7th, I think. So I'm gonna do a little bunny ears bow. Now, do you see how this is all curly? Quick tip here, you can come in with your bone folder or spritz it with some alcohol or you name it. I'm just gonna kind of put that between my thumb and forefinger and try to smooth that out a little bit. So it should get rid of some of the curl for you, okay? All right, so then bunny ears, I just take the two loops. Goodness, they're out tonight, aren't they, everybody? <laughs> All right, so zhuzh the bow a bit. All right, so around that size, I think. I like to pull the tails down and cut them at the same time. All right, then I'm gonna grab a mini glue dot and with this I like to just gonna show you I've got ribbon on here to keep the end from um, just kind of staying put and not getting all over the place I'm just gonna take my take your pick tool and do like a little burrito <laughs> with the glue dot so I've got kind of something narrow that I can stick on the back of my linen thread and then we can place that it gives us control on where to place that I just hold it with my index finger and pull the take your pick tool out and then that's gonna put that linen bow right there and not much of the glue dot peeking out. I sometimes tuck it behind the knot with my fingernails as well. But there we have our, what is this bundle called? <laughs> the Hello Harvest Essentials Box or Survival Kit, whatever you'd like to call it. Essentials in a box, Essentials Kit, Survival Kit. I don't know, hand sanitizer and chocolate these days are survival, aren't they? And then again, I just stuck a glue dot, or I stuck a gift card in the lid with a removable, glue, a removable glue dot. So there we have, and you can, the other great thing about this box is if you wanna put some other things in here, you can totally change up the divider sections as well. So I'll just show you, we didn't glue those down, so you can kind of, pick and choose what you're gonna put in here. This is a great sized box as well, just as a gift. Obviously a gift card does fit and then some, but you can totally change up your little dividers to be sized for what you wanna put in the box. So there we go. Hand cream, pocket back, and some chocolate. All right, so yay. If you love this project, why don't you take a moment and give me a thumbs up. That helps us here on YouTube. We are going to jump into tonight's q and I always look forward to your questions. So let me get that teed up here. If I, oh, here's my mouse. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I go ahead. I think that's ready. All right, Joanne, welcome. Hi, Melinda, you are so welcome. Great question for me. Um, bonjour, Evelyn. Hello, Diane. Yvette, I got the new florets yesterday. Do you know when you will so I can follow along? So yes, oh, do you know when you will work with the florets? I will likely start showing projects with the, what's it called again? Something florets. <laughs> fitting florets uh, starting in November when everybody is able to order it. So I'll start to do some projects then. Let's see. I will have the template for tonight's box, Donna. That will be in the project sheet, which I will get uploaded to the description of the video at some point tomorrow. So keep an eye on the description. I will link to the template and the measurements for you. The Turtle Bites Create With Love. I'm pretty sure I found those at Walmart. Um... I usually have lots of success finding stuff at Walmart these days. I don't think I found them at Target, but it's possible I found them at Target. But again, the brand is Demets, D-E-M-E-T-S. So uh, I might do a quick Google search and see if they're at Walmart or a local grocery store for you. 
Sharon, so pocket back is what Bath & Body Works refers to their uh, hand sanitizer, but I think it's their branded name pocket back. And I've got lots of projects for those because it's just such a great little pocket size. Uh, but yes, that's the Bath & Body Works hand sanitizer. Thanks Yvette for the tips on quality video quality. The cardstock, Bonnie, I did forget to say that, didn't I? It is Cajun Craze for the box base. And we have Mossy Meadow for the green and basic white for the sentiment. The scoring tool, Sherry, it comes from Stampin' Up. It is the Stampin' Up Simply Scored, and it's a double-sided stylus that comes with it. The scoring, the Simply Scored has score measurements at every eighth of an inch, and you can score with either a small ball tip or the large ball tip. I tend to use a small ball tip for all my projects. Some have greater success at the larger ball tip on patterned paper or the lighter weight paper and the small tip on cardstock, but I tend to use the small tip on both. And mine hasn't worn away. I've been using that baby for years and years and years. Love it. I love that Simply Scored is my favorite Stampin' Up! tool ever, 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 ever. When they first announced it at a um, convention, I was losing my mind. So love it. Let's see. Oh, Lydia. Yep. See, everybody's brain works differently as far as how they remove those squares. If using eight and a half by 11 for the box, will the measurements be different for the Mossy Meadow and DSP? It will not, Sharon. Uh, you're going to end up having everything else will be the same. The only difference is the flaps that fold into the box will be seven eighths of an inch instead of, um, I have to think this through, seven eighths. Uh, you actually will use eight and three eighths, I think. Anyways, the only thing that's going to be different is the sides that fold into the box. So the rest of the box will remain the same. Let's see. Oh, Yvette. So she got the Stamparatus and the extra foam pad, but so confused. Any tips? So that extra foam pad, Yvette, you can use in place of the foam pad that the Stamparatus comes with. They just have the printed grid marks on that extra foam pad. So I would just replace that with the foam pad that the Stamparatus comes with. Hopefully that helps you. And um, the foam pad you only need to use with photopolymer, not red rubber, because the red rubber already has foam on it. Super Chat, so Super Chat is just a way to give me a monetary thanks on YouTube. It's what, what uh, YouTube calls sort of a, an, uh, well, what, kind of what it says, a super chat. It's kind of a special chat that comes with sort of like a tip, like a buy me a coffee type thing. Will the insert measurements work in the retired mini paper? Oh, that box is retired, Sharon. I forgot that it might be retired. Um, good question. I think the mini paper pumpkin box is bigger than this because if I remember correctly, it was sized to fit uh, note cards and envelopes and those are three and a half by five. So this is a little bit smaller than that, but I'll have to see if I have, I think I have some of the mini paper. Hold on, I might have some. I do actually. So let me do this really quickly. This is the mini, yes. Yeah, so it's bigger than um, this box. So no, the inserts will not fit in the retired mini paper pumpkin. Good question. Let's see, I used Vaseline lip balm, but maybe chap ice. Um, oh, Tina, are you thinking in the little square cubby that I have the chocolate? Chap ice would fit in there too. I think you could fit maybe two of them. Let me think here, hold on. I don't know where I put those. <laughs> uh, not here. I don't know where, they're in a bag somewhere, but um, no big deal. So I think the chap ice would fit as well. They'll be swimming around in there a little bit. Um, so I would try to put something a little bit bigger maybe. The hand cream, Janet, size wise is one ounce from Bath and Body Works. And it is four and five eighths inch tall at the tallest part and one and a half inch wide at the widest part. And then it's about an inch deep. Okay, so four and five eighths by one and a half by one inch in depth. Okay. Is tonight's template the same as the one posted on your project page? 
Um, on the project sheet, yes, the template will be the same. It will not be to scale. I get this question all the time. My templates are purely for reference. They're not intended to be to the exact size of the project. The best thing is to look at them for reference and then follow the measurements guide. That will actually give you a lot more success with paper crafting if you just use it for reference versus trying to you know, line up using a template and, and scoring and folding that way. So it will be just for reference, but it'll be a much smaller version, but uh, you'll be able to see that on the project sheet. Is there a problem of the fragrance items contaminating the candy with their odor? I don't think so, Ruthie, because the candy bar itself is in a, a sealed plastic pouch. There was a question like that that was asked on my Facebook page a couple days ago related to the chocolate and chapstick box. And those that have made those for their craft fairs, somebody answered and said that, that, did, that the odor did not leach into the chocolate, but I haven't experienced that myself to be able to answer that. Uh, the size of the item. So Gail, I will not be including the size of the items on the project sheet because I try to keep that project sheet to one page. But as far as the, the, um, the cubbies themselves, this might help you with measurements. Let me go ahead and do this really quickly and grab my um, ruler here. So the pocket back section is one and three quarters by two and three quarters and it's one inch in depth. So one and three quarters by two and three quarters. This one is one and three quarters by, I think it's one and seven eighths, maybe one and three quarters. And then I'm probably not doing the math right on there. And then this one is one and a half by four and five eighths. Yeah, that's one and seven eighths, okay? So one more time, one and three quarters, two and three quarters one and three quarters, one and seven eighths, one and a half, four and five eighths. And those were all sized to perfectly fit these three items. Okay. All right. I have a hard time making a bow with linen thread or baker's twine. It always twists. So Jennifer, I have the same problem. What I have found is when I go to uh, sort of zhuzh the bow, but start to pull the bow loops till they're a certain size, you'll I've noticed that the linen thread kind of rotates back into place. So just kind of play around with that, um, pulling, making the loops a little bit smaller. And usually the twisting will sort of come or go the right way, I guess. I'm not using the right words tonight, um, but play around with that. Otherwise you can kind of twist and turn with your fingers on the bow to try to get it to stay put. Sometimes you can trick it a little bit with glue dots as well. You mentioned in your inspiration was a pumpkin box. Where can we see that? Um, can you hand me that paper pumpkin box right there? I'm going to show you what the paper pumpkin box looks like. Um, this is one of Lily's from June, but this is the paper pumpkin box. So the style of this box is what I based this one on. So you've got the lid that has, see how we've got the, um, the miter cut edges here. And then you've got your reinforced sides here and then the little finger notch here. So that's where I took my inspiration from. This is an actual paper pumpkin box. If you subscribe to our monthly subscription here in the US, this is the one from June, but this is how it arrives in the mailbox, shrink wrapped with your shipping address on there. And it's like so fun to find this in your mailbox. So that's paper pumpkin. Thank you. Are we allowed to share with you what we make from your live somewhere? Absolutely, Geneva. You can email me, you can tag me on social media, you can put hashtag paper pixie. I try to look out for that hashtag as well. Um, you can always email me at julie at thepaperpixie.com. I would love to see what you make with my tutorials, absolutely. Where do you purchase the clear little envelopes that you put the three by three cards? I buy those from clearbags.com. I can show you the item number right here. So it is B33 clear bags. These clear bags are three and a quarter by three and a quarter. Jean, thank you for the super chat. Um, so right here, three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And let me show you what those look like. I love clear bags. I just get these for our three by threes, but they are a sealing bag. You can get ones that, that don't need to seal as well. But yeah, B33 from clearbags.com. 
All right. Scoreboard, what is the size? So the Simply Scored goes all the way up to, I think it's 12 and 3 quarters. Uh, 12 and 3 eighths. It's really 12 and a quarter by 12 and a quarter is the maximum size, but we don't really have cardstock bigger than 12 by 12. So it's pretty much a 12 by 12 scoreboard. She's asking about the Simply Scored. And the finished size of the box, great question, Kathy. That is three and a quarter inches wide by four and five eighths inch. Is that right? Four, yeah, four and five eighths inch tall by one inch depth. So three and a quarter by four and five eighths by one inch. I will include that on the project sheet as well. A dimensional marge, great question. These are called dimensionals, they're little hexagons. I was trying to see if they were octagons, but they are just little um, foam stickers that basically do what they say they're going to do. Give the items you stick to dimension on your project. And we have the regular size ones and we also have mini, which I don't know if you can see those, but they're tiny, tiny, tiny. So those are dimensionals. I get this one every week. I love this. Why do I prefer the scoreboard as opposed to scoring on the trimmer? For precision purposes, Paula. Actually, because the scoreboard is much more precise because of the fact that you're lining up the corner, um, you know, the corner, you're lining it up, your score lines are going to be much more accurate than if you're a human lining up uh, your cardstock at measurement lines on the paper trimmer. So that's why I prefer the scoreboard over the paper trimmer. It's not a huge difference, but sometimes you can find that your measurements are just a little bit off when you score using, or your box doesn't line up quite as well if you use the paper trimmer versus the Simply Scored. That's why. What is a troll besides the guy that sits under a bridge? So Helen, trolls here on live streams are those that like to, they're basically bots and they like to leave inappropriate things in the chat and they just ping, 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 ping. So Brian has to act as quickly as he can to try to ban those people to stop those comments. So that's what we refer to as a troll because it really is what they are, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's just based on the content in, in the... Um, comment itself, Helen, typically it will have a link and it'll be something inappropriate. So not anybody that we want around here for sure. So Russian Aloha, I purchased the cardstock from Stampin' Up. And when looking for the original essential box, what is the name to search for? Brian, you want to go grab that? Just search for essentials box on my blog. Brian's going to grab that link and pop it in the chat, Mary. When I post this project to my blog, I will also link back to the previous Essentials box as well. He's doing a quick search right now. Should be blue. There it is. Essentials kit in a box. He's grabbing that um, link and he'll pop it in the chat. Um, but we are at the end of the questions here. I'm going to wait for Brian's. Let's see. Come on next to the next one here. Can I go to the bottom of the comments real quick? Thank you, Brian. I'm waiting for it to pop in. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. There we go. Brian just popped that in the chat. So look for his name with a little wrench by it and you can grab that link. Um, I hope you guys had a wonderful and blessed... My brain is fried. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week, but I hope tonight you enjoyed tonight's project and maybe picked up a tip or a trick or two. If so, please remember to like and subscribe to us here on YouTube. That helps us out here on YouTube. We appreciate that very much. I will be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 260, I think, of my weekly live stream. And I will make sure to update the description of this video here on YouTube with a link to the project sheet so you have those details between now and when this project will post to my blog post. Now, if you d would like to be notified of when I post new blog posts, you can just go to the paperpixie.com forward slash subscribe, and that will get you on my email list. You'll get an email when a new blog post has published, so you know when to check for that. So thanks again for joining me tonight. Thank you for all of the wonderful questions and all of your interaction. Thanks to each and every one of you who left super, super chats. I'm so very grateful for you. Thanks for joining me. I hope you had a great time, and I will see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.